Hi, I'm Clark on Temptress. This is going to be the beginning of a series of videos that will teach anybody how to solve wiring problems on a boat. We're going to take you from a rank amateur that does not know what an electron is, and by the end of this series, you should know how to find a voltage drop in a long wire in a complex circuit. And it's going to be way easier than you think. In this video, we're going to talk about the terms you need to understand to understand electricity. We're going to talk about one equation, one very important equation, and we're going to apply that equation and see how it affects the circuit in your boat. Last year I did a video series on how refrigeration works. We started with theory and we ended up with charging your own refrigerator. Now I know some of my deep dive videos aren't for everybody, but I think anybody that watched it through kind of realized they at least understood it. You know, the point where if you hired someone to do it, he can't snow you and lie to you and overcharge you. In this series, we're gonna do something much more fundamental, something that really anybody with a boat needs to know. We're gonna talk about how electricity works and we're gonna talk about how to fix problems and build up to the point where you can fix problems on your own boat. Electrical problems will happen. Boats, especially boats in salt water, are pr prone to corrosion. And generally, your whole electrical system is made out of copper, which becomes easily corroded in a marine environment. It's difficult to find when things aren't working when you don't understand what's going on. If it's just, I turn on the switch and nothing happened, you can't say you have command of how your boat works. You will have problems in your life with a boat. And knowing how to solve these problems is going to give you so much power and also just be quicker and easier. You won't blow your weekend trip because you can just fix the thing instead of waiting until a mechanic can come and help and fix it for you. In this episode, we're going to talk about a few things in particular. We're going to talk about some terms that, that we need to have to talk about, like volts and amps. I'm sure you've all heard it, but we're going to really understand them by the end of today's video. And we're going to understand them because we're going to talk about the math. It is the simplest math of all physics. And it's important, but it is actually trivial to understand. We're going to talk about how electricity in a boat is inherently different than electricity in your house. By the end of the series, you're going to be able to solve what is a common problem in boats. Very common. You hit a switch and nothing happens. Honestly, is easier than you hit a switch and the light comes on, but it's flickery and it doesn't work right. That's caused by a voltage drop in a circuit. I've done seminars on the beach on a method uh, of how to do this. And a lot of people out there following my method can solve this problem. You're gonna be able to solve this problem. Can't talk about that today because we have to build up to that. But by the end of this series, you're gonna know how to fix basic electrical problems and not actually advanced ones that the pros have trouble with. This is not a video about pretty girls on beaches. It's not about cute puppies. This is for grown-ups. This is how to actually do stuff. The people in the world that really are up to the standards of you guys watching this right now aren't the majority. And I need to have a certain number of views on this to feel like I want to do it. So I need your help. I need you to give the thumbs up down there. Do it right now if you think, you know, I'm going to do a good job. I need you to subscribe, of course. Commenting also helps. But the thing that helps the most, and the thing that we found out is promoted most of these deep dive videos that aren't for everybody, is you have friends that own boats. You send them a link and say, hey, you should watch this series. I learned a lot from it. That helps immensely. That's what's gonna make this video successful enough that I'm gonna to wanna to finish it. So please share this video. Now let's get on to the real stuff. We have some basic terms we need to define, and we're going to define them using this piece of wire. So what is electricity? Electricity is the flow of electrons. And before we get into the practical use of it, let's just hit it at a really, really low level. You remember from somewhere in your education, the whole world, all matter, is made up of atoms. Atoms have a nucleus, and they have electrons that flip around them. For our purposes, there's going to be two categories of atoms. There's going to be atoms that hold on to their electrons and don't let them, they don't share, you know? We're gonna call those uh, insulators. And, and the other category is going to be atoms that are very loosely coupled to their electrons. They don't mind sharing them with someone else and they will pick them up from someone else. We're gonna call those conductors. Metals tend to be conductors. 
plastics, things like that tend to be insulators. So we're gonna use both of those right now in making a wire. This wire is some copper, which is a good conductor wrapped around in some plastic. That's a good insulator. So we can have uh, a flow of electrons go right through that wire, but we can put this wire near another wire and let it touch, or I can grab it with my hand and I don't have to worry about getting hurt because I have the insulator around the outside to protect me. Now, the conductor down the middle, in a perfect world, if we could do this, it would be what we refer to as a superconductor. Actually, no impedance to the flow of electrons at all. Well, they kind of don't exist at the temperatures we would need, and if they did, I don't think we could afford them yet. Maybe someday. So we're using other um, conductors. And what we're using primarily on boats is copper, because it's really darn good. The only thing really better, I think, is silver, but again, not in my budget. So we have to accept that there's a little bit of impedance to the flow of those electrons. And we're gonna call that impedance to the flow of electrons resistance. Resistance in a wire is lower if the wire is bigger. That kind of makes sense because, you know, a big old wire should be able to pass more than a little skinny wire. The resistance is measured in uh, ohms and it's ohms per foot. So a longer wire would have more resistance than the same kind of wire in a shorter length. And then finally, copper, when it gets hot, its resistance goes up. So a cooler wire can pass more power than a hotter wire. That's all we're gonna go into about the physics of resistance at this time, but we'll use resistance a lot as we go on. Next thing, flowing of the, the electrons through it. We need to measure them. We're gonna measure them in two ways. One is how hard they're pushed. How much force wants them to go from one end to the other end? We measure this in voltage. So a higher voltage uh, circuit would push harder on the electrons. The final thing is how many can actually flow through the circuit per second? And we refer to that as amps. Amps is the number of electrons that can flow in a unit of time. We put all these together with Ohm's law. Ohm's law is the one equation I'm gonna talk about today. And it's V equals IR. I know math is scary and lots of people don't want to know about it, but let me tell you this. One equation, only three terms, uh, it's the simplest equation you've ever seen, and it's so useful. Uh, you're going to use this to understand the concept of how basic electricity going through a circuit works, but don't think this is like baby down. I'm doing electronics now. I'm designing electronic circuits with, you know, surface mount components and multi-level boards. And the number one equation I use is this equation. Physics has a million equations. The electrical part, there's probably two or three that matter that you use all the time anyway. And this one is the one you use 90% of the time for everything. So it's worth learning and it's really simple. Here's what it is, really simple. It's V equals I R. And before we even talk about what all those terms mean, I wanna show you a little trick if you ever have to work with this equation, you ever have to figure out how to balance things and stuff, and you know you're gonna need this equation, don't even write V equals I R. Write down on a piece of paper a V, an I, and an R, and put them inside a triangle. Really easy to remember. Where they go, is for me, is easy to remember because the V is the pointy one and it goes out at the pointy end of the triangle. But what this done, is done for you is it's done all the algebra you'd ever need because V equals I R. But if you want to solve it for I, then I would equal V over R. So you do it this way. I is V over R. Same token, R is V over I. And V equals I times R. Um, I didn't invent this. I, in fact, just saw it recently when I was doing a little search on YouTube for something else. And I'm just inspired by how easy this would be to remember. Anyway, V equals IR. So now we've got our terms and we've got an equation of how to use our terms. Let's use this in an application. Now, most boats have refrigeration nowadays. Refrigeration uses a whole bunch of power. 
um, it uses a lot at any given moment, but it also is running like all the time. If you really think about it, or you do a budget of your power usage on your boat, you'll see refrigeration is right up there. So if we could come up with a way to use less power to our refrigeration, we would make a big savings on our, you know, total electrical usage in the day. We might need fewer panels or smaller batteries or just be able to go farther between recharges. So let's talk about a particular installation. Imagine that there's a refrigeration compressor that uses 12 amps. That's pretty high, but it just makes the numbers better for my example here. And somebody has wired it up with 12 gauge wire and the whole circuit from the battery through the switches to the compressor and then back to the battery's negative side is 60 feet long. Copper wire has resistance. We can look it up on tables, it's well known. 12 gauge copper wire has a resistance of 0 0.162 ohms per foot. So 60 feet of that has a total resistance of 0 0.0972 ohms. Sounds like a small number, but it, it affects things. If we put a circuit together that draws 12 amps, and we know that the wiring resistance is at that level. The wiring resistance is going to cause a voltage drop. Right back to Ohm's law. You take those three numbers. We know 12 amps. We know R. And if we uh, apply them to each other, we come up with a voltage drop of 1.16 volts. That means the refrigerator actually sees 1.16 volts less than the batteries are delivering. In the case of well-charged lithium batteries at 13.2 volts, that fridge is only seeing 12.04 volts. That's quite a voltage drop. Let's see what we can do about that. If we were to simply up the wiring from 12 gauge to 8 gauge, 8 gauge wiring has a resistance of 0 0.00064 ohms per foot. Running through all the same math, we get a voltage drop at 12 amps of 0.46 volts, which means that if we have a 13.2 volt battery running this system, the compressor actually sees 12.74 volts. The difference between those two is 9%. And how refrigerators work, they're gonna use the same power. So if you give them 9% less voltage, they demand 9% more current. That means you're using 9% of more power out of your batteries overnight. So sometimes lowering the resistance can make a huge difference. Wire has resistance, but the contacts between the wires, the terminals, the bolts that are holding the terminals on, each of these things has resistance. And all I want to, to express right now is any resistance in a circuit that uses power eats up power. When the resistance in a circuit goes down, the available voltage to the component goes up. So, you know that if you lower the resistance in a circuit, you've got some savings. And you could just change out the wire and do it all with double aught, great big huge stuff. It would be great, the devices would be happy. But you would find that there's a diminishing returns. Now that you know Ohm's law, you can actually say, if I switch from this to this, I'm gonna save that much then you find out how much it's worth to you and make the decision. Copper's not cheap nowadays, and it just might not be worth your time to do it if there's a little bit of savings. So being able to do the math will save you time and money and improve your boat. Boat wiring is very different than house wiring. It's different in that it's DC wiring and not AC, direct current, not alternating current. It tends to be battery-based. We tend to have to treat our power a little more preciously. It's not just buying it, it's actually making sure we can make it. It's very different in that the voltage is very different. A house could be 220 volts and a boat is 12 volts. That's a tenfold difference. If you had a circuit that used 12 amps at 120 volts and you did everything we just did with the refrigeration example, you would still find that the difference in the two wire gauges would cause a 0.7 volt difference in voltage drop. Now 0.7 volts when you're talking about 12 volts is a lot. 0.7 volts when you're talking about 120 volts is like less than 1%. And it just doesn't matter as much. 
So in boats, resistance is everything because we're in such low voltage situations. In addition, on a boat, you've got this corrosion monster that you tend not to have in houses. And the corrosion will eke in there later on and every contact will become a little worse every year. Now, eventually in this video, we're gonna talk about how to find the problems. But what I'm saying right now is if you design your system so that it can accept a little bit of growing resistance because the rest of it's all stellar, it won't matter so much. Lastly, on a boat, why do you have a boat? Well, you want to be able to travel. You want to be independent. You want to have that feeling, you know, that you command your world. You can't plan that life and expect to call an electrician every time you need to change the light bulb. You need to have some understanding of this. So that's it for the theory and basics. Now let's do a quick review. So how did you do? Well, if you're an old hat at this, I'm sure that part was very easy. If you're new to this and you have a little trouble, maybe you want to review. It's good to have an understanding of what we just went over today. You probably won't have to actually apply the math every day, but get that idea that when one term goes up, the other term comes down and they're interrelated. That's all that's necessary. If you've got some friends or some crew that should learn more about electricity, please turn them on to this video. The next video uh, will go on a little more practical. We're gonna go through tools and devices that will make your job easier or even possible while installing and fixing your electrical system on your boat. So stay tuned and we'll see you in the next video.